Hello friends and welcome back to a favourites video. These are always my favourite videos to film. I hope you enjoy them. We basically just get to chat about the stuff I loved this month. That's decks, books, videos and other other things I got up to. And of course, as usual, we will start with the books. So the first book I want to talk about is, it's funny to put it in a favourites, but I sort of feel like it belongs here, even though it only got three and a half stars from me. And that is the Blossom Book Club book for the month of June, which was Escape Roots. This is by Naomi Ishiguru, and this is a uh, collection of short stories. And I suppose as with many short stories and anthologies and just books that are kind of like a mix of different things, it was a mixed bag. Some stories in here I really did not like at all, but there were a couple in here that, you know, made me cry and are the reason I wanted to include it in this video. It says here, whether snared in traps artfully laid for them or those of their own making, the characters in Naomi Ishiguri's delightfully speculative stories yearn for freedom, flight and new beginnings and find their worlds transformed beyond their wildest imaginings. And I think that's certainly true for some of the stories and the stories that I liked most were Flat Roof and Shearing Season. And I think they certainly fit that description. I guess the theme of this book is like, it's just full of really uncomfortable feelings like grief, anxiety, restlessness, as Laura said from Aquamarine 18, just a lot of uncomfortable feelings. We meet a lot of these characters at kind of points in their lives that are have caused them a lot of pain and grief or they're kind of on a precipice of making a decision or they're not sure where they're heading in life. Just a lot of uncertainty. And so I quite enjoy a lot of that angst. Um, some of them feel less satisfying than others though. And the stories that felt most satisfying to me, as I said, were Flat Roof and um, Shearing Season. Those are the two that stand out to me. And I think in particular, Perhaps it's because I liked the characters in those stories the most. A lot of characters in these, this book are not very likeable, whereas in those two stories, I feel like the characters are at least somewhat likeable. I will say though that Naomi's writing is beautiful. I absolutely loved it. It's so engaging and really just vivid. There was also a few moments of kind of like playing with form in this book that I thought were kind of fun. Um, in Accelerate, a story about a guy who basically his life unravels as he becomes more and more addicted to caffeine and coffee. We get to a point in the story where he says, I was now moving too quickly to think comfortably even in prose and was needing to inhabit an even faster moving medium. And so the story switches from using prose to like a script. <laughs> so it's quite a frantic chaotic story, which very much mirrors um, like the mental experience of the main character. So it was a mixed bag. Um, I only gave it three and a half stars for that reason. Um, but some of the stories in here were just really, really beautiful and that I adored. So I wanted to include it in my favorites video this month. The next one I want to talk about is Tradition, Truth and Tomorrow by Galaroy Yunupingu. This I also read in the same vlog as Escape Roots. It was a really good reading week, what can I say? This is a really, really short book. I read it in one sitting and it's just an essay um, from Galaroy, who is um, a Aboriginal elder. On the back it says, Galaroy has played a key role in the battle for Indigenous land rights and has been a strong advocate for Aboriginal Australians. And this is kind of just like a really brief overview of his life but specifically in relation to his role as a leader I suppose um, of his community um, and his political engagement I suppose um, like his experience with different members of parliament and with several prime ministers and just trying to advocate for his community trying to get some land rights trying to improve their life all of that stuff so it's full of some incredible successes and the resilience and determination of this man um, but also just a lot of heartbreak and disappointment. Just simple, powerful, effective storytelling of, of this man's life and his journey. In that same week, yes, it was a great reading week. I also read the third in the Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells, which is called Rogue Protocol. And this got a big fat five star rating from me. This has been my favorite book of the month. I absolutely loved it. The Murderbot Diaries series is just a, like a short series of quite short books. I think there's a longer novel at the end, but so far all the books I've read have been like 150 pages. And it's like this sci-fi futuristic, 
adventure sort of thing um, where our main character, our protagonist, is a um, security unit who's like an android, um, but it's sentient um, and can think for itself, make its own decisions, and it's off on a bunch of adventures. <laughs> and although Murderbot, which is the name this security unit has given itself, does get into a lot of trouble, um, it's really quite funny, it's really humorous, and I just love how this you know, non-human entity tackles things like morality, what is and isn't okay. Also, it has a lot of anxiety. It's just an absolute wild ride. It's so fun. I cannot get enough of this series. I know that um, I'm up to number three, so there's a fourth short one, and then I think there's like a longer novel. And I'm already sad <laughs> that I'm getting towards the end. I want this, this is the sort of thing that I just want to go on forever. I absolutely adore it. It's so, so fun. And I could not recommend this series more highly. I love that the books are so short because they're just so fast paced and you never get bogged down with like a bunch of backstory or like side development for secondary char characters or anything like that. It's just kind of like action packed, what's happening, what's going on. Um, but from like this really kind of almost human, but really not perspective, which is just really, really fun and interesting. I love it. I've already downloaded the fourth one. I can't, I'm trying to like space them out a bit so I can save them, but oh, they're so good. I did also read a couple of other books like um, It's Our Country and Boy Swallows Universe, but I think those three would be my top favorites. I did want to ask you guys though, if you like this format of every month me just talking about my favorite stuff, um, or if you would like me to do like a reading wrap up as well at the end of each month where I talk about the books that I loved, but also the books that I didn't. I suppose that would depend on how much reading I got done each month, but I don't know, let me know what you think. Now for decks, I just have one to share with you this month. It's the Dreamtime Reading Cards by Laura Bowen. Oh, I, I just genuinely, like this was my first kind of love as far as Oracle decks are concerned. Um, more recently, I've kind of been obsessed with her saltwater reading cards the last couple of years, but I pulled this one out to take a photo um, for the TS Bookshop Instagram and I just kind of haven't put it away again. I've had this deck for years and years and years and it is just it's like a home deck for me. I just, I adore it so much. These colors are just so pretty and vibrant. And I love um, Laura's guidebook. It's so simple and direct, proactive, helpful, all of the things that a good guidebook is. But I know these cards so well at this point, so I don't always go to the guidebook. Although I do feel like very often Laura, like reading through that does add something really powerful to my readings when I'm reading for myself with these cards. But a lot of the time I just like pulling these cards out and just like meditating on them in the morning. Just that more subconscious interaction with the cards of letting them affect me and my day moving forward. So it's no secret that I'm not using Tarot and Oracle as often, as much, as intensely as I have done in the past. But it's just lovely to have moments like each week, a few times a week with decks like this that are just simple moments of joy and recentering for me. They've been such an important part of my life for so long now that I think Laura Bowen's decks are just always going to be among my favorites. Now I want to talk about some YouTube favorites and this is probably the most substantial <laughs> section of this video this month. Towards the end of this month I've been a little bit like in my head with stuff. So I've been watching a lot of YouTube, which is not a terrible thing. There's a lot of great stuff on YouTube and I wanna share with you some of my favorites. First, I'll talk about a video that's probably most relevant to this community that I participate in. Um, and that is a video that Benavel Wen did called Hey Spirituality, Pagan and Tarot Community. We need to talk about this shadow. And basically in this video, Benavel kind of went through um, a bunch of different videos from the tarot community and also different communities on YouTube that discuss the Black Lives Matter movement. And she compared the dislike ratio um, and the negative reaction um, in this community, in the tarot community, to other communities like the beauty community and the booktube community, I think were the main two. And basically, spoiler alert, this community on the whole does not like talking about racial issues and white supremacy and kind of confronting those topics in our community because our dislike ratio is really quite high. I think this is something a lot of us have known for a long time, but having Benabel kind of break it down so simply was not surprising, but really disappointing. And I could make a whole video on why I think that is, and I'm sure there's many different elements to it. But ultimately I do think it, we have to get out of our heads that because we're like love and light and working on spiritual 
development and stuff that we're somehow above all this stuff because quite evidently through a lot of people's experiences and literally through likes and dislikes we're not we're not above this stuff because nobody is so i think that's just a video worth sharing and worth talking about because it so explicitly deals with this community specifically now i want to talk about another video that is not to do with tarot or anything but it is to do with cards and this is like a video series that jesse over on bow ties and books does um, to help them pick their TBR, so they're to be read pile for the month. Um, and they have a deck of cards that has like prompts for choosing books. And I just think it's such a creative, playful way to do the whole process of establishing a TBR. I don't have a TBR in that way. Like I don't pre-plan the books I want to work, like read um, at before at the beginning of the month. I, I'm a very much a mood reader. I read whatever I want. I have a bit of a general idea of some of the books that I'd like to get to soon. But for the most part, I just read what I want to read. Um, so I'm not somebody who creates a TBR, but I know a lot of people do. And there's a lot of videos on it every month of people making their TBR in the booktube community. But Jessie's approach to this is entirely new unique and just so fun. I love it. So I'm going to share that video below. And Jessie's channel in general is just brilliant. One of my favorite channels lately has been the Artisan Geek and I've saved like quite a few of their videos that I wanted to talk about um because I couldn't pick which one <laughs> to include in my favorites video. I found them through um YouTube recommending me the video Black Classics I Know You've Never Heard Of and just it's I hadn't heard of most of the books so it was a very insightful and informative video but just like the opening sequence of that video is hilarious. It's just some solid content gold, it's fabulous. I also really liked their video on how to read poetry and where to start. I'm not a big poetry reader. Um, I try sometimes and I just, I feel really like incompetent <laughs> as far as poetry is concerned. Um, but AG has kind of recently gotten in to poetry. Um, I don't know how recently, but it's not something they've been reading for their whole life, you know? Um, so they kind of went over some ways to get introduced to poetry and some ideas about how to read poetry and stuff. So I don't know that I'm going to become a poetry reader, but I really enjoy that video. And then a video they put up just a few days ago that I think is very pertinent to a lot of discussions that people are having at the moment is intentional reading and how to diversify your reading material. And this was a fabulous video um, that really kind of broke down different ways that we can ensure that our reading is diverse. And that's in every way that you can think of. Um, and they also offer a lot of different um, avenues for accessing kind of like indie or um, less popular, well-known books and titles. So if you're someone who kind of feels like you're stuck in reading like the new releases or like the big titles or the Amazon bestsellers, I think this is definitely a video you want to read. Watch. <laughs> And another video that I loved, and now I'm following this channel too, um, was by Sim Kern. Um, and this video is called How to Fix Harry Potter Merch Since JKR is a Turf. And it's just two and a half minutes, but it was very, very informative and helpful. And then a video that is very near and dear to my heart and is a tag. So maybe, maybe I'll do this tag at some point. Um, was BTS book tag by Little Wolf. Now they did not start this tag, but this was the first video of the tag that I saw. And Tish just seems really sweet and really fun. Um, and books and BTS in one video, like, you know I ate that shit up. So as I said, I've been watching a lot of YouTube, but those are some of the videos that I saved that I wanted to tell you guys about. There's so much good stuff on YouTube. I'll leave links to all of that below. The other thing I wanted to tell you about... <laughs> is really silly but as I, I I haven't been doing super great as far as my mental health is concerned I'm okay I'm safe but I'm just you know taking it easy right now but something that has brought me way too much joy that I have watched multiple times already since it was released like four days ago <laughs> is the Eurovision movie Fire Saga with Will Ferrell and um, Rachel McAdams I've known this movie was coming out for ages I mean anyone in the Eurovision fandom has known the and Will Ferrell showed up to Eurovision last year and maybe even the year before like we've kind of known that a movie was coming I think a lot of us were quite apprehensive Eurovision's easy to make fun of <laughs> and like I'm not someone who takes it too seriously I don't think I don't think you should take anything too seriously I'm not someone who takes it seriously in that way but I do think that I don't know there's a difference between having fun with Eurovision and just like making fun of it right and I was concerned that it would just be very American centric, like making fun of Eurovision, but it was not. It is not an objectively good movie, but just, it is so fun and wholesome and pure. <laughs> like 
just when I'm not, I haven't been doing so well. So just kind of sitting down and enjoying like a silly musical show um, that is about something that I love so much with a lot of amazing cameos from wonderful artists that we've had over the years. And honestly, I cried. I cried at the end. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I think it's just come at a perfect time. Like it's not going to go down in the history books as a great movie, but it's just simple and silly and fun and joyful. On the whole, I think you can tell that Will Ferrell, I'm not sure if he's a fan of Eurovision. I think he certainly at least gets why people love it. There were a few too many like penis jokes that I thought were a bit boring. Um, and like the the stupid kiss scene that almost happens. I feel like that happens in a lot of Will Ferrell movies. So some of the humor was a little bit cheap, but overall just like the music and the celebration and the, oh, I just, I, I love it. I'm one of those people that when I'm not feeling great, I tend to like rewatch comfort things. A lot of the time that is like Stargate, Doctor Who or Harry Potter for me. I think I've like outdone Stargate and Doctor Who for a little while and I just, I can't, I will get back to loving Harry Potter separate from JK Rowling, but for now I'm just a little bit too mad to enjoy that as like a simple pleasure. Turns out Eurovision Fire Saga is now my comfort thing that I've watched way too many times already. I love it. And especially seeing as this is the first year ever in 64 years that Eurovision has been canceled. My year is literally planned around Eurovision, right? So like my May just felt empty. <laughs> so I just, I feel like this is just, it was a gift to the Eurovision fandom who are really, we're still grieving <laughs> that we lost Eurovision this year. So it was one of those movies that it's not gonna go down in the history books as like a great piece of art. <laughs> but it just was joyful and I loved it. Also, can we just talk about this jumper? You know I love a good jumper. This might be my favorite at the moment. <laughs> so those were all my favorite things of the month of June. Of course, I have to say a big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon, especially a big extra special thank you to Tracy Timmerman, Laurie, Lynette Brown, and the Hales K. Thank you all so much. And thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you've been loving this month, whether it's books, decks, movies, YouTube videos, Whatever, just let me know what's bring, been bringing you joy in your life. Because a lot of powerful, amazing, difficult stuff is happening in the world at the moment. A lot of sad stuff is happening in the world at the moment. And while we have to stay engaged and active in those areas, I think we also need to make space for fun and joy and happiness. So let me know what you've been loving in the comments. I will talk to you again soon and much love. Bye.